Hi, trombone lovers. My old friend, Dan Tucker, uh, suggested that I talk about writing for three trombones. I know most school bands uh, and a lot of professional, a lot of professional bands use four trombones. Um, that started to happen uh, in, the, in the 40s with Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller. Of course, they were trombone players and they made the fourth player. Uh, and then later on, um, certainly by the 60s, well, in the 50s, bands started using four trombones instead of three. Um, Britt Woodman told me this story that when he was with Duke in the 50s, that one day he and the other two trombone players, Duke always used three trombones. And they, they went to Duke and they said, Duke, all the other bands are, are using four trombones now. Uh, why don't we add another trombone player? And Duke said, well, then it would be too easy for me to write for you. Of course, Duke was being um, facetious in the way that he liked to be. And, uh, uh, but there is something to that. It, there's a, for me, there's an economy in writing for three trombones that I really enjoy. Uh, Brookmeyer was asked, uh, there was a master class at Eastman 40 years ago, and um, one of the students asked Brookmeyer about writing for three trombones or writing for four trombones. And he said, well, when you have a fourth trombone, you got to get uniforms and put numbers on the back. That was interesting. Since when he was with when he was writing for Jerry Mulligan's band, they had three trombones, and um, those were really about half the book was Bob's. Really great writing. Uh, but then, shortly after that, he started writing for Thad Jones's band, and that's four trombones. And then, I all the projects I know of that Brookmeyer did after that, uh, he, used, he used four trombones. I prefer three trombones. I I can write for four. Uh, but um, I prefer three. I like the economy of three. Some concepts, things to um, uh, keep in mind uh, is that every musician, except for drummers, uh, took up their instruments so they could play a melody. And trombones are no exception. Almost everything trombones get to play in big bands is ba, 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 ba. You know, they, they do that so much, it, after a while, they, um, they don't want to do it. Uh, you know, they're like the piano player's left hand. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but you gotta give them some melodies to play too. And even when you, even those parts, you wanna make them melodic so that, that when they play their note, it feels good. I, you, most students have always asked me, well, give us some formulas, give us some rules, give us some things that we can do all the time and it'll always sound good, and then we won't have to think about this ever again. Like when you're writing for trombones, always, if you have three trombones, give the third trombone player the root on the bottom, and then give the other guys, the two guys the third and the seventh. Well, yeah, that, that'll sound good, uh, and uh, I do it sometimes. Uh, do I do it most of the time? No. Um, I, I think variety is very important uh, for the players and for the listeners. So I like to vary the textures, um, you know, solo trombone, uh, unisons, harmonized, uh, voice with the trumpets, or voice with the saxes, or just the trombone section alone. Um, I like to vary the intervals between the, the parts. Another concept uh, that I've, I learned from Ellington and Strayhorn is to individuate the foreground and the background. That is, if say there's an alto saxophone solo, and this would be true of, if you listen to any Ellington recordings with Johnny Hodges playing a solo, uh, and there's like three trombones behind him, the melody notes that Hodges plays will not be included in the trombone voicings. Very rarely do they, do they ever double any notes. It, it makes those, the foreground and the background, they're as different as possible. We like to give them different rhythms and different pitches. So I picked a, um, a chart that I wrote many years ago that um, we heard a little bit of it uh, as the intro to this um, talk. And um, it just, so it's just, it's not, not that different from many other pieces that I write. I didn't really, wasn't thinking specifically, I'm gonna write some interesting stuff for the trombones in this. No, it's just, I always try to find interesting things for the trombones and to keep them happy. Uh, that way I, don't, I can pay them a little bit less money and, uh, and they'll stay with me. Um, everybody likes to have a good part that feels good and you want the trombone section to sound good within itself. But, you know, the three guys sitting, they're sitting next to each other and so they should have, um, the sound of those three guys should sound good. 
uh, you know, need to add, even if they're voiced in with the trumpets or the saxophones, um, just the trombones by themselves should sound um, very good. So sometimes we put the root on the bottom of the trombone voicings, and sometimes we use rootless voicings. Um, can, uh, you can do like a whole passage of one or the other, or you could alternate. Sometimes I'll have them play a, a rootless voicing, and then they'll jump to a to a uh, um, having the root on the bottom, and then go back. Whatever makes musical sense, whatever sounds good and feels good. Um, so let's look at the intro to um, do it again. Uh, do it again is on um, a recording on uh, our best-selling. Uh, CD actually, Hindu Sand. And um, so let's listen to the intro. You'll see that the trombones, they'll be voiced in fifths, there'll be a triad in the trombones, there'll be unison trombones, they'll be voiced uh, three, seven, nine. Uh, they'll be voiced uh, in a four part harmony with uh, two trombones and two trumpets. Uh, that happens at a different point in, in this chart. and. Uh, and um, sometimes um, they, there will be like a triad inside of a voicing uh, where, say, there's a, like, and then there could be um, notes outside of that. But the trombones will have this triad. Why do we like triads in the trombones? Because the trombones represent nobility. Uh, that's their character. And, um, and a triad, the triad is the most noble of, of all of our um, uh, the, the types of chords that we use, the sonorities that we use. Uh, how often do I write triads for the trombones? Fairly often, but um, as you'll see in this piece, um, when, it, when they do play the triads, it really stands out and uh, um, it's very noticeable. So let's listen to the intro. And um, so you'll see fifths, triads, unison, three, seven, nine, four parts with the trumpets, and so uh, inside triads. <laughs> So that was the intro. Now, for the rest of the chart, I'm going to use a lot of the same techniques. Uh, let's listen to the head now. The head is the melody part of the, uh, of the chart. And um, so the trombones are used in a bunch of different ways on the head. Uh, again, voice in fifths. Um, and sometimes the trumpets can be voiced in fifths above that. Or sometimes the, the trumpets voiced and fourths above the trombones and fifths. Um, those are nice combinations. Um, the trombones can be voiced and fourths, I suppose, also. Uh, I'm not sure that happens here. Uh, the triads and the trombones, you do that sometimes, and uh, we'll hear that. Uh, unison, there's definitely trombone use. Three, seven, nine, I like that, that spacing a lot. Or it could be seven, three, seven, nine. Or we sometimes do seven, three, 13. That, that's pretty common as well. And we're going to hear the uh, trombones, uh, two trombones, two trumpets um, in four-part harmony. I didn't want any more than that, just that. Let's take a listen. solo section in the piece and there are backgrounds and uh, there are interesting bone voicings there, uh, a lot of stuff with fifths 
and the trombones and, and, and then the trumpets, a lot of open kind of voicings. There's a nice thing that happens in the, um, at the, in the coda. And it comes out of uh, the descend is a descending pattern, whole step uh, descending pattern in the saxophones in the intro. Well, in the coda, the uh, trumpets are going to descend in triadically uh, in the whole step, and then the trombones are going to do it triadically. Uh, and so you get to hear the power of tri the nobility of triads. Thanks for, uh, for listening, and I hope this answers some questions and will encourage you to be more creative when you write for the trombones and not just give them... Yeah, they like to do other things too. So next time I'll be, uh, I'll be dealing with another, um, uh, another question about arranging... Um, well, maybe some of you will submit some, uh, some questions and I'll, I'll try to answer them. Happy writing.